What's your minimum specification? So today's topic is about conferences. I'm sure most of my audience here um, go to some form of conference in their job, whether it's a technical conference or a media conference, or maybe even a public showcase at events. Now, during the pandemic, obviously, there's been less chance to do in-person events, so everything is going online. So there is this push-pull, as people understand, how to actually do virtual events. Now, in a normal given year, I'll do one to two events per month. These are usually on you know, the semiconductor side, PC side, general consumer side. So we're talking about uh, IFA, Computex, CES, uh, Mobile World Congress, but also some of the technical conferences like Hot Chips, like ISSCC, uh, like uh, IEDM. The, all these conferences are trying to find the best way to present their data. So now, conferences are different. Some of them will have a vendor element. Some of them will have a presentation element. Almost all of them actually have a presentation element. Uh, some of them are more academic fo focused. Some of them are very much uh, consumer and product focused, or some might be more business focused. So trying to find the right platform to arrange all of those can be quite difficult. Now, this week, the conference that I'm attending is ISSCC, International Solid State Circuits Conference. And they've actually come up with a really, really neat way on how to implement a conference system. And I kind of want to show it to you because it's it's novel. I never thought I'd see this uh, at the beginning of this pandemic. So let's dive right in. So what ISSCC are doing in this 2021 virtual lounge is using using a um, 16-bit gaming application movement. If you're think if you've ever heard of Club Penguin or something like that, it's almost kind of like that, just not as you know, running around with little kids, but this is the space that they have. Let's log into, let's call it test. What's my name? Uh, camera, phone, join a gathering. And this is, this is the interface. Um, there's me, you can see me running around. Uh, this is essentially meant to be a show hall, exactly what a standard conference would be. So within this hall, uh, we can see people. I mean, here is my little avatar, uh, and then everybody else's avatar with their names uh, and affiliations, some of them have put in. And if you walk within far, about five blocks between each other, you can talk to each other uh, through audio and through video. Uh, and this is just you know, casual conversations out in the open. Um, users can go into one of these private rooms and if you see here you have entered a private space and only the people in the private space can hear each other so even if somebody stood outside they couldn't hear them now as always with these conferences there's lots of you know just meet casual hello um in the in the hallways uh, and more sort of private meetings and you can see here some of the companies that have uh, essentially purchased space uh, for the, for their company to advertise their company, uh, some of them will have bits here that you can interact with. Um, so here, Oxford University Press, you can go see what they're publishing. Uh, some of them will have video screens, which you can click on here, and it will show you know a video about whatever they're doing. And the idea is that during the standard conference times. Uh, these areas will be populated with company representatives and you can go in, you can go chat and you can see what's going on. Aside from all this, there are rooms. So we have a press office here. And again, uh, during standard conference hours, there'll be a, a, a representative here for the press. And, you know, these are computers, but they're actually just private spaces. And then uh, you have a microwave and a water cooler and a proper conference room. Uh, again, all of these are private. Essentially, they're just different private spaces, but it's designed to look like an actual conference. So it is a real conference. It's just that we're not there personally. So alongside rooms like this, uh, you have all the different sessions. So as and when these sessions are meant to be active, uh, you'll be able to go through the door. At the minute, they're locked because uh, we're currently just before when the sessions start for the day because we're on Pacific timing. Um, special sessions get these special rooms here where people are meant to sit around and listen. Um, 
speakers go into here and if you step into these spotlights then you speak to the whole room uh, and similarly somebody can come and ask questions here and you know there will be admins on hand you know perhaps standing in front of here so nobody tries to mess it up though like i say as much as club penguin-esque this is it's uh it's a professional event so i just realized we've gone out of a door we can't come in but um if you wanted to get involved with some games there are some games on these tables though that's not really the purpose of it i mean you can unwind i guess comes through some more private rooms and you can see mr david Cantor of uh ML Commons there, and through here, we've got another another presentation room. But this is this is for the uh, keynotes and uh, roundtables. So you can obviously imagine having all this filled up with people. Um, be a different live logging experience, that's for sure. Uh, demo sessions for different demos, and we get um, you know, small little pop-ups here mentor events so i mean a big part of some of these conferences is uh, the student element so students will come along um and uh industry professionals can be you know mentors and give advice about certain things so you know how to become a leader career self-development communication skills career in academia so normally these sorts of things would be at a designated time or space at the event but now we can have them in this sort of virtualized environment and then you know you have people with the desks uh, can speak to if if anybody needs help if they want a mentor. So for me, this kind of really brings about some of the more personal aspects of a conference that I've never that we've not had during a virtual event. Um, and even here, we can have the beach. So if you want to just have a chat with somebody by the beach, there's no private areas on the beach. Um, go for a swim. Clearly get some rays for all those conferences that tend to be in sort of more exotic locations this is uh, a poor facsimile but it's better than nothing so the main thing that i've really missed during these sort of these in-person conferences that you're not getting in in um in in virtual conference land is just casually meeting people um who you know from previous events and just having the chat i mean it's all very well going to uh, the conference areas um, all, all very well going to virtual conferences and watching the presentations and understanding what's going on and asking questions there. But it's actually the conversations in the hallways that give more information than arguably some of those presentations do. And for the first time since the pandemic started, this actually feels like a conference. I can walk around, I can go speak to people, I can go ask uh, for help if I need it, if I'm having trouble accessing things, there are people on hand to help, a event staff. Um, I, if if this was applied to other conferences, you know, there'd be, you know, say Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, and, you know, you could go be shown around all the different um, product areas, and, you know, and you, so you can see specs of all the products that they're presenting, um, and maybe get sort of 3D models and stuff like that. It's, it's a really interesting concept. Um, and so ISSCC are using, it's called uh, gather.town and they're you know paying a license. It actually works out right, relatively expensive for the premium license, which is what they've got because they've been able to custom design their own area and have interactive whiteboards and videos and stuff. Um, it costs $22 per user per month. So for a conference that only lasts a week, obviously um, you can adjust that. But when you're paying conference fees of say three, $500, Normally that's, you know, for the setup of the venue and to pay for the invited speakers to fly out and also pay all the admin and, you know, give something little to the volunteers maybe. Those fees, some uh, conferences are still charging those high fees and you wonder why. Um, at least I can see with conference fees with a platform like this, it works. It gets people together. It makes it more inviting. Now, I have uh, mentioned this on Twitter and somebody came back to me saying, uh, you know, what if you don't want to get involved with, uh, you know, having to walk around a map? What if you want to, you know, just just watch the presentations? ISSCC has allowed it so by default you actually just have access to the presentations. You actually have to go into the special lounge area, which is what this is, in order to access this. 
Um, but you'll see people walking around uh, just called anonymous, people who haven't put their name in, haven't put their affiliation in, so you don't necessarily know who they are. The one downside of this system, the one downside of this system is that you can't really be a fly on the wall. I mean, if people know your name but not what you look like in a standard in-person event, you know, I'm actually quite small, so I can sort of weave in and out and perhaps get an earshot of something I shouldn't. Whereas here, my name's on display. Everybody can see it. Everybody can say, oh, we shouldn't be talking with so-and-so in the room because I'm press. Let's go get a private room or let's take this offline to a private chat, get on the phone, what have you. But all in all, I think it's a pretty good experience. Uh, we're currently on the second day of presentations uh, for ISSCC. There's going to be more coming throughout the week. Um, not, a lot, not a lot of them consumer focused. I've already written up a series of um, information about the Xbox Series X SOC and some of the trade-offs they ha had to do there for yields. That was a presentation yesterday. The rest of the week is more sort of you know RF and uh, low power devices and you know different unique uh, structures. Perhaps not necessarily content for uh, written or video, um, but interesting nonetheless. And obviously, it helps going to future content. So what do you think? How have your conference experiences been during the pandemic? Have you had anything like this? Have you had anything better? Please let me know in the comments because these companies keep asking me, what can we do better? What can we do? What can we do better? Right now, I'm going to point to this until I see anything else that uh, piques my interest. But thank you for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're so willing, um, click on that bell to be notified of future content. Uh, I also have a Patreon if you want to invest. Um, I've earmarked a few interesting uh, products lined up uh, cut that com they're coming out of that Patreon money um, for future videos. Uh, so doing that really helps invest uh, into the channel and helps bring you content of the weird, wacky and wonderful. But yeah, what's your minimum conference specification? To be honest, I really like this 16-bit implementation. It's fun, exciting, and it feels more like actually being at a conference than what we've had from other virtual experiences.